You ain't where you promised, where you at. You ain't a killer. You still learning how to talk on the, on the Cali on the grill, nigga. Jerry Joe. Now, gentlemen, you walk that eat the rep, man. Walk the left crack. It ain't where you promised, where you at. You made a great mistake. You shouldn't have came here to change your fate. You put it on my headphones. Hold on. When I raised the stakes. Yo, let me tell you something. That's my, I can't see you, Nori. That's my favorite Big Pun song ever. Wait, uh, you ain't a killer. And um, uh, you ain't a killer? Get out of here. Get out of here. You ain't a killer is my favorite oh. Big Pun song uh. ever to this day. When I hear it, I can't hear it once. I got to hear it multiple I, times. I, I, I hit you like real quick, but I want to let everybody know who's tuned into the Fat Joe Show. It's 22 years since uh. Big Pun's debut album, Capital Punishment. And um, it's a big day for us. And I was asking Lordy, I was asking my wife, I was like, yo, Ma, how did we feel when we dropped that album? And she was like, yo, we was on top of the world. Like, she was like, the biggest in the game. The biggest it. in the game. Biggest in the game. Like, she was like, yo, we was, we was on one. Like, we was on that shit. Heavy. Right. You know, uh, shout out Steve Rifkin for putting us on, man, and giving the <laughs> opportunity. Sean C, Maddie C, uh, everybody at Loud Records. But uh, for me, when I met Pun, and I'm going to get to you, because I know. Uh, Take your time. When I met Pun, he was so nasty. And I'm going to elaborate how I met him for the first time and all that. But when I met him, he was so dope. People got to understand, before Pun, the only Spanish rapper that was popping was Fat Joe. And when and I met Pun. And Boy George around, though, right? My huh? boy George, Curious George was around before that. Yeah, but I mean, we, yeah, you know, I, I know what you mean. I know what you God mean. bless yeah. Curious George. Yeah, yeah, talking, yeah. You know, we talking yeah, about yeah. that. You yeah, know, yeah, we I talking about, you know, Spanish nigga, half moon, chains on, hundred niggas behind, different type of atmosphere going on, you know? Yeah. So, but Flojo, my first single, I went number one in the country. And when I met Pun, I said, holy shit, this this our Latino biggie. This is this this is our God. So I have to step back mm -hmm. and hold an umbrella because I knew he was a hundred times better. Some people don't know how hard that's to do. For me, it ain't. But for some mm -hmm. other artists, they won't know how to do that. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So I just knew that Latinos and hip hop, because mm -hmm. you know you have black, you have Spanish. That's the way I view the whole world, anyway. For me. Mm -hmm. Right? So hip-hop to me, that's how it go for me anyway. I'm half right. black, half Spanish, even though I'm Spanish, right? right? But we needed somebody like that. And yeah. um, and that's why, you know, we went all out and we, we pulled every favor, every trick, everything we could do to give him a possibility to be the biggest guy in the game. Um, right. How did you meet Big Pun? Well, first off, I, I, before I say how I met Big Pun, I never knew you felt like um, Ain't a Killer. You felt like that. You know why I love Ain't a Killer? Because he shouted out Left Rack. And no other rapper shouted out Left Rack at that time. So I was like, oh, my God. Yo, you was like, Left Rack. <laughs> like, every time I hear it right now, I just, even right now, I like So, you, so you telling me Big Pun could have hung out in the corner store on no, Left he Rack? Did. No, he did. No, he did. He did. He did? He did. He did. He did. I got 15 million stories apart. But here's one of my funniest stories. This is not how I met him, but this is how we we already cool. We did the Pete Rock record together. We did um, Funk Flex album together. We did Onyx album together. We did Royal Flush album together. And so we, we, we got used to hanging out in studios on other people's budgets. So we would dug it out. You know, we would do whatever. But this is the time. This is on my budget. We're an electric lady. And, you know, Pun, Pun is the person who put me on that we actually have a food budget. I never even knew you had a food budget. <laughs> like, he was the first nigga that said, Nori, you know you got $500 you can spend on Pizza Hut. And I was like, what? <laughs> and like, so he would put me on, well, whatever. We was at my studio and I was, um, I was, uh, uh, you there? You there? Yeah, yeah, I'm here. Okay, okay, okay. Now, so I was, um, I was actually trying to repay Nature because Nature, I was on a firm album and I, I, I laid my, my, my record for the firm album on Nature Session. So Nature could have hated on me. Nature could have been like, yo, this nigga's not even firm. Why is he on the album? So he never hated on me. So I wanted to pay Nature back by putting him on what became banned from TV, but it wasn't banned from TV at first. So 
this is just a normal joint because if you listen to NRE album, I say, I lay low, I call Big Pun and Fat Joe, the niggas my clique, we three amigos. What I wanted to do was me, you, and Pun together on NRE album. We wanted to be three amigos. So it was two joints. I wanted to put y'all on Esta Loca or, or this, this joint called The Story. And it's both, it's still on NRE album. But anyway, moving on. So I, we're an electric lady, and I used to never smoke cigarettes. I smoke cigarettes. I never smoke cigarettes no more. But even when I smoke cigarettes, I never like to smoke inside. So I went downstairs to smoke a cigarette. Nature finally lays his verse, and I come back, and Pun has a whole verse on Bad TV. <laughs> no, no one, no one. Yo, if Pun so Pun do, put he thug his way on Bad from TV. One million percent thug his way on Bad from TV. <laughs> one million percent. And hey, y'all. He went crazy on there, pork chops and applesauce. But but here's the crazy shit, crack. I had been like I said, I'd been like the session with Pun at this time, like five or, or five or six or maybe ten times, you know. And Pun took his time um laying his vocals, you know what I'm saying? Like him and Biggie had something about their vocal control that was really ill about that. But it took some time to lay it. It wasn't no, like no quick and um, quick and done thing. For this instance, I swear to God, I went and smoked a cigarette. This nigga had. His doubles laid, his ad libs. <laughs> he was done, yo. And they had a couch in the, in, in, in the vocal booth, and I was like, yo, how did you do all this in that fast? And I let you know how amazing Pun was. I don't know. I can't tell you if Pun wrote that rhyme there. I can't tell you if he had that rhyme. I you know, Pun. Did. I tell people all the time, Pun right. used to fall asleep and then wake up and write a whole Have song. A rhyme. On the whole, a whole song, like, I don't know how he used to write in his sleep, like, he used to go to sleep and wake up and write a song. I can't do that. What? I, can't do that. I can't do that shit for nothing. And, I, I, um, I tried, I, and I said, I gave up immediately. I tried one I guess time, the reason I why, I guess the reason why Joe's still around or, or Joe stepped the skills up every time is because I went to pun school. Right. So even though I put pun on, Pun would sit me down. He was determined to make me nice. So right. he would sit me down, me and him. Nigga, we popping. We the number one rappers in the game. It's the right. summer. Right. Dudes coming by outside in trucks, honking the horn. Yo, we going out. We going here. And Pun would be like, fuck them. We writing. So I'll be sitting there old school. And then I write something. He'd be like, yo, that shit is whack. Step your game up. Talk wow. about this. Talk about that. So. Wow. People don't understand, so when Pun passed away, God bless the dead, it prepared me for my future to be Fat Joe the Rapper, and that's when I right. stepped my game up. But uh, right. Capital you did a great punishment. job. You did a great job. Capital Punishment. You know, yeah. Capital Punishment. Yeah. We oh, spent man. about a million dollars in that video with you and Pun. <laughs> Yo, yo, oh, no, you a, was loving that shit. Yo, listen, here's another point, right? Here's another about that video. So right, you're not there yet. You coming up, you 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 pulling up. So so they they're the people on the video said are sweating. Cause they can't let Pun jump off of this fucking thing. They cannot let this happen. You remember Pun jumped off, off the, the roof? Thing? Yeah. But he wanted to do it himself. So Pun is going like this to me. Pun goes like this. Yo, just say yeah. I say, all right, cool, because I don't know what I'm saying yeah to. So the director goes, he goes, Yo, Nori, why'd you see me jump off a building higher this this before? I go, No. <laughs> no hell no, Pun. He said, hell no. <laughs> I couldn't co-sign that. But all listen, a lot of people don't know. When you watch the You Came Up video, Pun did all his own stunts. I know it sounds crazy. I know it sounds crazy. Other than him jumping off, when he jumped off, he didn't do that. But when he kicked the guy and he karate chops them, that's all Pun, man. That's all. People nah, ask he loved, Yo, he loved that shit, man. Yo, he really did his own stunts in the video, man. But yo. I watched... I watched that video earlier, you know, just seeing me, you. I'm going to tell you some crazy shit because yeah. this is a story mm -hmm. I never really told nobody, but I'm going to do it mm -hmm. with you on here, right? Because you're oh, my no brother. Problem. You deserve no this one. No this, problem. Is, this, this, this is a Joker moment. Mm -hmm. so, Let's go. I'm sitting there. So I didn't realize that when we was coming up, you know, when we came up, we came up hard. Right. Fat, from Fat Joe, from day right. one, since 14 years old, I was smashing dudes in the Bronx. Right. Punishing dudes bad. Right? Right. And and so we had a reputation for, yo, they go. Like, right. like, like on instant, 
Anything you say to them, they're going to go. Right. So I remember one year we was outside the Puerto Rican parade. We just finished Puerto Rican love, Puerto Rico yeah. Morena. They, yeah. Everybody got the Puerto Rican flags. Yeah. So this kid comes up to me and he says, yo, Fat Joe, I said, yo, what's up? He said, yo, my uncle told me you pussy. I said, it was like 30 of us, right? The whole terror squad was there. I said, what? I got yeah. my shoulder. I said, yo, Boricuas, Boricuas, they please. Like, <laughs> why, why are you doing this? Yeah. Nah, you know what? Matter of fact, I know you pussy. The crew was like, ah! <laughs> so I couldn't help it. They started yeah. chasing this guy up up the bridge. Is the bridge going from Harlem, from, from Harlem to the Bronx, the 138 C bridge? So they chasing him. Yeah. And Puerto Rican day with everybody honking the horn. Right. So they chasing him. They're going to catch him and pound him out. But right. my thing is, I never touched him. I right. never, I swear to God, I ain't lying to you. I had nothing to do with this. Mm. What the kid wanted was a lawsuit. We didn't know. We was yeah. rich already. We didn't know they was just trying to gas me so he yeah. could get a lawsuit. So yeah. they catch the kid. They they pounded him out legend. Right. And the next thing I look, the gray band starts zooming up there. Oh, no, Hunters with the gray band zooming. Ay! He opens the door. He comes out the car. I'm like, no. I'm running up the I'm running up the bridge. No. So I run up there. Pun, you know he sneaks two or three in. No <laughs> bro. They, they was trying, I don't they was trying to act like act pretend like they were gonna throw this kid off the bridge. Oh no. So, oh, no. I don't want him in broad daylight. I saved right. the kid, I swear to God. I wow. saved him. Like, wow. yo, they was hitting me. Like, I was like, no, 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 stop. Enough, enough, enough. Mm -hmm. So he leaves. About a month later, I got an autograph signing. And uh, two detectives come. I'm oh, signing wow. autographs. I got like a thousand wow. kids. I'm wow. signing. Two detectives come, and they come, and they're like, look, Joe, after you sign the autographs, you know, you're coming with us. We're locking you up. Uh, uh, you know, wow. For uh, for robbery, and the, you know the kids said I robbed them and all that. Some bullshit. I never touched wow. them, Lori. I never wow. touched them. So wow. I'm like, so I, my lawyer, I call him immediately. So my lawyer's already talking to the DA. Like, so when I go to the precinct, I can actually see the judge that night. Uh -huh. So my lawyer's ahead of the job. DA is like, all right, no problem. This is that. This is most likely a bullshit case. Anyway. So I go to the precinct with the cops. They put me in the world's smallest cell in the world. I think 41st precinct in the Bronx. So I go there. I'm sitting in there. They're doing the paperwork. Cops, very nice. Yo, don't worry. In about an hour, we're about to take you to set you booking. You're going, you're going to see the judge. No problem. My lawyer's in the precinct. Yo, bro, about 10 minutes before I go, the yeah. whole precinct starts going crazy. Ah! Banging on the wall, all type of shit, right? So I'm yeah. like, yo, what's going on? The whole precinct. The cops open the door. Pun walks in with a black leather suit, like a blazer, pants, <laughs> with a bottle of champagne, right? In the where I'm at in the cell. Now I'm about to go home in two hours. She said, You book it. I don't want to spend the night. Right. So he walks in, he says, Yo, twin. We made the papers, twin. We made the, I'm like, no! Yo, Tori, they put pun in the little cell with me. Now, wow. I'm standing like the Good Times poster. You know Good wow. Times? How the motherfuckers just stretched out? I'm right, stretched right. out like this. Pun is sitting there, he's sitting up going, yo, twin, they got jails for guys like us with swimming pools. They give you massages and this. I said, yo, pun. They're going to put us in the dirtiest jail with the biggest killers in the fucking world. And uh, it was so crazy. He's such a genius. But common sense, he was a little off. Yeah, he was he crazy. Was a little off. Now he you really know thought they had jails for celebrities. So I'm nah, like, yo, pun, they're going to yeah. cut. They're gonna put. So that fucked up me going to the judge that night because both of us is on the case now. <laughs> so we have to spend the night. Now, we go to Central Booking. Big Pond, Fat Joe, and Central Booking in the Bronx. 
motherfuckers mm. going crazy, like, oh, shit. And um, I never told that story before, though, but, like, I never seen no shit, man. I never seen shit like pun. The police let him stay in the cell by himself with the wow. gate open and the wow. phone. They brought him the phone. Wow. So he could talk to his wife all wow. night long on the phone. Big Pun sent you book it, mm. right? And mm. then, I don't want to say who, but we got a friend who had the super clout. He mm. came up there with lobsters, pork chops, steaks, <laughs> paellas, shoulders. <laughs> Nigga, we fed the whole central booking. Lobsters, steak, crackheads was eating steaks, lobsters, all type of shit. We That's saw the judge in the morning. We beat, we, you know, we didn't beat the case. It was a lawsuit, but um, that shit was crazy, man. That shit was crazy, man. Yo, pun is too much of a movie. People Yo, just I'm about don't to ask you, did you. Did you see the, the shit on Netflix, Waco? Like you seen them? The, the yeah, I seen stuff. Waco. You think you think you think you think Pun could get a, a a mini docu docu series like that? Like a like well, that's called docu drama. But like, look, you know, I like, know he can. But the thing is, yeah. you know. When, when Pun passed away, you know, I gave all the rights to Big Pun to his family. Right. right so I don't yeah. own Fat Joe cannot put out a Pun record. No, no, I think, movie. I, I think I think it's time. I think it's time. I think I think everyone will will understand that because we we his his story has to be told. And like I want to see who 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 we can pick for an actor for Pun. Like I want to oh, see no, somebody. Pun, Pun, that yeah, yeah, be I want to see that, man. Lord, I, mean, I, I don't know what that. they you know if they're gonna do that, but they should. Right. You know what I'm saying? But that should have been nah, crazy. But, but, but to tell you the truth, even if they do it, you, you got to be involved, you know? You got to be involved. It's not, not right without Fat Joe. Like, I don't know what to I, tell I, you, I, know I, I, I don't have no dog in the fight. I'm just being real about it. Fat Joe involved. The world has got to be, you know, the world got to know that, you know, I've been around. I've seen Fat Joe. I've seen fun around each other. These brothers love each other. So, and, 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 and you have to be, you have to be. I don't know how we're going to do it, but. I, I guess I'll be the middleman or something. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. But yo, listen, nah, man. Nah, but it's almost years. time. It's almost time. But it's, you know it's that's time, up, man. Capital you know that's up to man. that's up to them. Ruben yep. Diaz, pun is in your top five. He better. He be. better be. He better I mean, be. Well. You know, I'm gonna get I'm gonna get some other people on the thing. Nope. I want to no know. No, 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 yeah. no. Yeah. I'm not yeah. saying that to you. Open up my blinds. Open up my I'm blinds. just saying if Tony uh -huh. Sunshine's on the check-in. Tony Sunshine, what a great guy, man. It's strictly family, and then we're going to let some fans. Yeah, yeah, hell yeah. Know what's up. We're going to let Do some that. fans tell us what they love most about Pun. And you, you want me to tell you what I love most about Pun? He was the funnest dude i ever been around. Like, I'm talking about fun. I remember, I remember, like, we went on. Lorena started what's... smiling. She agrees with you. I remember he loves well, Pun. Pun loved Lorena. <laughs> Who wanted to make of the Latino little little kid? <laughs> that's all. That's all. Just let that's me all. break the rhymes. <laughs> you gonna battle little Kim? You gonna be on? Uh, Lorena was like, yeah. "Man, I ain't rapping about shit." <laughs> like, yeah. crazy. Yo, yo, one time I was on a roll with Pun, and all of the niggas from TS was trying to get on my bus, and I was like, "Why you trying to get on my bus?" Because Pun was giving them welfare cheese, so they wouldn't shit on the bus. I was dying. Right there. <laughs> nah, he was crazy, man. He was, he was giving them welfare. Yo, the cops, let me tell you something. The cops came uh -huh. up to me. Uh -huh. The cops oh, used to come up to me, uh -huh. and the cops used to say, uh, uh, like, they would talk to me and be like, yo, can I talk to can, can, Yo, Joe, let me holler at you. They'll pull me over. Uh -huh. They'd be like, yo, listen, man, we love Pun. Because, you know, uh -huh. Pun, what people don't realize, Pun would not move out the hood. Like, oh, no, he, he bought the house yeah. in the hood. Yep. Um, he would have 10 motorcycles in the front, a yep. limousine on 24 hour hold, exotic door. Like, he was not leaving the hood. He was in Soundview, Westchester. He was not leaving. Word. I already lived in Jersey in a nice neighborhood. He Word. didn't want to move, right? right? But the cops would come up to me and be like, Yo, Joe, we love Pun. We love him to right. death. He got to stop shooting water guns at the yeah. old ladies oh, oh, yeah, the outside the supermarket. The super yeah, yeah, the so super skirt. Yeah, yeah, go in the super soaker. Yeah, super soaker. Outside <laughs> the supermarket, old ladies come out here, shoot them with the water. Uh, nah, man. <laughs> yeah. Yo, the cops used to come it. to me like, yo, we don't want to lock them up, Joe. Please. <laughs> but everybody knows that that Gray Benz is Big Pun's yeah. car. Yes, yes. He coming nah, through. He was, he was a mess. He coming through he was, right he, in the front. He was a mess. 
I and oh, I love you. Yo, man. I'm love you too, my brother. Check. Rest in peace, I big love brother you. ever. One love. All right. Dollar. That's the N-O-R-E. Nigga on the run eating. Yeah, we got some more friends on here to talk about pun. Then we're going to let the uh, fans, you know, it's 22 years since capital uh, punishment, you know, it, you know, changed our life in hip-hop music. You know, if you love bars, if you love beats, you know, that thing was crazy. It sets off with that beware when we took that prodigy up and um he was going crazy on that thing right there and um i love just being on the outro you know for me when I, i'm listening to the album all year or all day and i'm saying to myself i'm listening to the album all day and i'm like the way i felt the way i heard my voice at the end on the outro what's up my brother yo Rick? what up what up yo, what up Rick? yo my brother yo Rick? Tell me, what does Big Pun mean to you being a, a Latino hip-hop fan? Break it down, man. Oh, man. It's like, I remember Joe, like, what was it? 9-8, Bushwick, Brooklyn, hearing, like, you're not a player, going crazy. And I had to, I had to, I had to go get that album, B. I ran. And I took that album, bro. I ran to um, Nickelbacker Ave where Tony Touch used to have his mixtapes on the block. I know uh, the spot. On Music Hut and Nickelbacker Ave. And, and Bushwick was all Boricuas and Dominicans. All that Nickelbacker and Troutman, all that. All, all that. Bushwick all that. Is all body yeah. at yep. the time and before gentrification. 100%. <laughs> 100%. And man, it's just. I remember me and my friends, like, that was like a, sort of like a a moment in time for us. Like, we just was like, what are we going to do today? We're going to get that pun album. Like, we were waiting for it. You know what I'm saying? And, like, his anticipation was incredible because I knew, you know, you know, his singles was, like, ringing crazy. And it was just, like, this moment of, like, oh, like, this energy to me that I was like, I've never seen this before. You know what I mean? Somebody who looked like me, who talked like me, but was competing at the highest level, at a level from the, on the level for people that I respect. You know what I'm saying? Like the Nas's and the, and, and the Jay-Z's and everybody who was- um, I'll tell you a crazy the... story. Keep your yeah. thought, because I need that from you. But I tell yeah. you, every time somebody says something, I think about something, you know, I took pun. His 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 idol was Cool G Rap and Big Boy. Daddy Kane. So I took him to Cool G Rap and Nas when I had just signed him. Yeah. And I told Pun to freestyle for them. I don't know how I got them two together. It was Nas and G Rap. And when I seen them doing the bobblehead, like, <laughs> and you know, at the time Nas was the best rap in the world, and G Rap was just leaving being the best rapper. In the, like, G-Rap was the king. He was the, he was the illest. And then Nas had just took the throne. And with, with my hat the throne around that time to me. And when Pun rapped to them, and they was like this, <laughs> I knew I had I said, nah, Joe, yeah. you got to go all the way out. You got to go all the way out with this guy. This is the guy. And they was like, yo, that boy is crazy. G-Rap was like, word, word. That boy is fire. Hey, uh, mommy. Say hi. Hey, Say mommy. Hi. It's the cookie monster. <laughs> I'm the cookie I'll monster. I'm talking to Fat Joe. Oh. Yeah. Yo, nah, it's a bad feeling because I always wondered because I'm in it. So, mm -hmm. you know, when you in it, it's a little bit different. I knew it was big, but I was wondering what it was right. to be like. You were how inside. How did you feel you like inside. we had a lot of, yeah. you know, superhero? What was the energy? What was it? I it was just like, like I, you remember when Big was popping? Like you know what I'm saying? Like nine three? Like you remember that that day? It was like Big was like, it was ringing. That's how I felt for us. It was like that. It was it was that like, it was like that. You know what I'm saying? It's like massive. okay, massive. You know, and I was just excited, man. I was you know just... what we did in this album release party? His album release party, we kept it Latino. 
We had the Latino. I guess we started the bartenders. We we had the Latinas giving out the drinks. We we made acapurias, bacalaitos, ices. We had that just straight Spanish. But yet the real hip hop community right. was all in that party. The the the, the Raekwons, the Wu Tangs, the the MOPs, the Mob Deep. Everybody was at that party, but we was representing that Latino culture yeah. on another level. Yeah, and you know, you know, me being, you know, sort of like just seeing it from afar, like, because I remember at that time, like, bars mattered to me, and just like <laughs> dissecting like the things that Pun was doing on a level, and then like saying, okay, we got somebody that could be top three of all time, you know what I mean? And then like going crazy over there and championing it, you know what I'm saying? Because the freestyles, the stuff that Pun was doing at that time, too, like, just featuring on other people's stuff and outshining them. It was just like mind blowing, yeah. you know. Nine you know, Pun, you know. Pun, Pun was the only guy that I used to run with Pun and Pun would see some, un this is when he's double platinum. Yeah. Um, he would see some kids battling, like doing the cypher and he yeah. would jump out the car and battle them. Like unknown <laughs> rappers, like, where you go, you go and then start battling these guys, and I was like, yo, Punt, you know, Punt took an L and be over. I'm like, <laughs> you know, and Remy, same way, like, they, 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 Remy was battling yeah. Uh, while she had lean back out. Like, I'm like, yo, what are y'all doing? Mm -hmm. Like, no name rappers, but that that's what it was for Punt, you know, when you, when you listen to Capital Punishment and he did the song uh, with Black Thought of the Roots, I ain't even gonna lie, I wasn't even up on Black Thought, and at that time, right, and, and he was up on it, and he, he he just wanted to be known as the best lyricist in the world. That's it. Which I thought was I, which and we all appreciated that he did that because I understood it. Like you know, the roots at that time was one of my favorite too. Like I had things fall apart. I had all that stuff, you know. So for me, it was like, oh, that's genius, and that's the best thing he could have ever did was to say, no, I could go bar for bar with the best. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, he wasn't. I mean, he was, you know, it was almost a setup when we did. Uh, I know it's Capital Punishment Day, but we talking about it was almost a setup for Nas on John Blaze. So I was cool with Nas. Uh, I was doing John Blaze on my album. Pun was like, "Yo, get Nas, get Nas, get Nas, get Nas," because he wanted to yeah, get on a record with yeah. Nas back. So he was like, he was like, "Yo." <laughs> My crew puff fly. Anyone test the pun must die. Just give me one try. You know you done fucked up. You done fucked up. <laughs> no, you ain't got no wins in me casa. Get the pasa. You ain't even in my class. In my class. Oh, you know, God. Uh, the man, I still, you know, so, so like me, you know, I like, I, I deal with pain different. You know, after pun died, yeah. I, got, I, 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 yeah. I went into depression for like two years seeing the psychiatrist all that like it was a really dark time so even like my sister passing away give you know and, and all, all those things i try to keep like in a in a box where i, I walk sure. towards the light so i don't feel like that but today i allowed myself to listen to all the punch shit and just reminisce and be like right. damn man we was we was on some shit man we was on some shit it was crazy I mean, man I mean, you know what i gotta tip my hat to you because you know you, and you mentioned this with Nori before, was this idea that you saw talent in somebody else who was Latino. And, and it wasn't about jealousy or competition. It was about, no, this, this is next. And I have to be Bro, part of it. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? And, and I think, you know, that's, it's such a blessing and, and an amazing example you know, to see a Latino say to another Latino, I want you to win and I want to help. You know what I'm saying? And that's so important, man. And I'm and again, like I said, just being on the outside, it was the identity. The identity of who Pun was made me. And at that time, uh, Joe, you know, I was auditioning and, you know, trying to get into films and television shows and, you know, just finally getting my feet wet in the game. And you know, I said this before in other articles because people have interviewed me about, you know, who was a real inspiration. I've always said pun because pun at the time was there popping when I started my career. 
And it was because he gave me the, you know, just that energy to just be who be myself because I saw myself winning in him. You know what I mean? Even though he's from he's from the Bronx, I'm from Brooklyn. Everybody in Brooklyn that was Puerto Rican or, you know what I'm saying, that loved rap the way I did, you know, all of my friends, we we championed him because we were like, we see ourselves, you know what I mean? And so identity is so powerful. And uh, and so, you know, I salute you for that, man, because that's a beautiful thing. You know, uh, you know, I know uh, I met, you know, his son and, and I and I told him that. I was like, you know, he your dad influenced the hell out of me because he, you know, it's just incredible what he did. Just just being who he is and, and bringing that amount of excellence, excellence into his work, because lyrically he was inc I mean, he laid the foundation. He was for real. Huh? He's way, yo, he, he was he was born, he was born for that, man. You know, there's some, yeah. there's some people that their job occupation is that. Yeah. His job, he was born naturally in his DNA, his DNA was to be, you know, the greatest Latino MC of all time. My crew will catch you and trap you inside of Cooper's castle. I mean, when he said that bar, I was like, Oh my goodness. Well, he said, We recognize who lies. It's all in the eyes, Chico. We Chico. need them to see them for what they are. These and undercover cars. Oh, Taking my, take my pictures like, like I'm a fucking, fucking star. star. Come on. I, I'm Ooh. sitting there like, Oh my God. Like, you know, even yeah. to this day, I listen to every time yeah. I listen to Pun's music now, 22 years later, yeah. a gem goes off. Like, I'm like, Wow, that nigga said that like that. Yeah. You know what I mean, and um, uh, and music in in, in general, they, it it just ain't that type of time no more. Yeah, it, it ain't on the lyrics like that no more. You know, it's yeah. more fun, play. But uh, at that time, you had to be real with them bars. For real, you could not survive. No, and that's what I'm saying. Like, like people understand the climate of '98 was like. I mean, you had cannabis who was like in his bag. You know, uh, you you know, Nori was killing it. Like Nori was just putting out fire. Uh, you know, John Forte. Um, you know, even the lyrical cast on um, Most Deaf and Kwali, and there was just so much lyricism and sharp gems coming from everybody that you could not come out whack at that time. You know, and yo, I mean, you know, it's the time. I'm gonna get some more of our friends on, man. I love you, my brother. Thank yeah, you man. For supporting us, man. We appreciate you, man. Keep doing your thing in Hollywood. We man. moving for you. Man, I appreciate you for having me, Joe. All right, stay up, my brother. Yes, sir. All right. Man, that was crazy, man. You know, Rick, he's, man, he's a, he's a good brother, man. He's out there making the, um, movies and TV shows and acting in Hollywood. And, and he always supports and we support him. You know what I'm saying? But Big Pun had that kind of effect. And for me, what was crazy was, um, I'm trying to see if Tone is on here, right? Is he? He'll come back. So, um, you know, I'm trying, I'm trying, so I go, let me see if he's on here. Oh, right. let me see if he's on there. There you go. So, my squad is on it like Elijah Muhammad. Joey! Yo, Tom, man, what's up with you, man? What's up, big bro? Everybody, ladies and gentlemen, this is Tony Sunshine. <laughs> what's Don't going on with you, da, brother? Da, da. <laughs> my, my favorite record to perform, huh? Hey, yo, let me tell you, that's the biggest record in the world. It's the biggest record of my life. You know, I told... Uh, I told, let me not talk shit, man. Let me let me let you talk with your experience of Pun, how you met Pun, how you became my little brother. Break that down, Alice. Uh, me and Pun. I met Pun about four or five years after I met you. Remember, I bumped, I, 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 ran, I, I ran up on you when I was like 12, 13 years old, and I sang um, Forever My Lady by Jodeci. Um, Let's fast forward about four or five years later, sitting in 23 Park. Um, it was me, Pun, and two or three other guys. And somebody had brought a dude with them that 
they went to college with and this kid said he sang. So he started singing the Color Me Bad record. And when he opened up his mouth to sing, I looked at him like, oh, that's not how you sing the song. And I just bust out, started singing. And Pun looked at me like, holy shit, wait a minute. And he told me to do it again and do it again. And from then on, I was with Pun every day. That was the first time I met him. That was the first day I met him. And after that, because I sang, and we both know that Pun wanted to be a singer, so, you know, I guess vicariously through me, it was like, all right, I'm I'm, I'm going to finally sing, you know. And he came to get me every day with that yellow little boom box he had. Remember the yellow little boom box he used to pull up on the block with? He used to wear the ripped up shorts with the tank top, with the stocking cap on his head. And he used to pull up every day in the cab and jump out the cab. He would go to the store, buy a sandwich, a soda, and sit on the benches in 23 Park to wait for the rest now, of the, the way, fellas. The to way pull I out. tell the story, the way I always thought I told the story was I always thought uh, like I met Pun by mistake. But when I backtracked the story, I think he set me up and he knew I'd be going to the bodega over there. That's a fact. This. So we he all made did. sure he was in price and positioning. So the day Fat Joe pull up, he gonna be out there, right? That's the truth so, though. I remember I walked up in there. I, I walked in the store. I, I had the white Lexus, the uh, LX400. The and, white uh, Lex. I, I, it was my last day of my second album. Like, I had already finished Jealous One's Envy, and I had to go to the studio that night. But anyway, as I walked in, I knew um, uh, Toon. Toon. I knew Toon. Uh, what they was calling them? Joker? Milton. Milton. I know Milton. Toon, stop. You know, we know they chip. We know that shit. Like, don't do that. So, nah, so nah, nah, nah. Let me stop. Let me stop. We Let know, me stop. but anyway, him. I never even knew he rapped, but they had formed a group. So when I came outside, Pun was rapping. Remember, Pun used to have these uh, rosary beads around his head. He had a uh, a tank top on. So I'm like, yo, what the fuck is this? Yeah, you remember these niggas used to shave their heads and leave yeah, one listen. strand of hair with so braids. Like, yo, I said like this. And so. I went over there and I said, what the fuck is this super fat Puerto Rican nigga rapping about, right? And he started freestyling. Right? He was like, chill, 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 chill. And they let him go because they knew he was he was, he the, was the nicest of the Fuji's. They knew. Yeah, he was the they, one. They knew he was the one. Everybody shut he up. He was the one. So then he starts rapping. He goes, and then he just stopped the set. Snatch the moon out the sky and blow the sun blow away. The sun away. Me and my niggas play hardball, hard ball, strictly hardcore hard lyrics till I'm finished breaking God's yo, jaw. Said, oh my job's raw, but I gotta do it. I'm feeling yo, high and booty, so yo, you yo, might get shot and lose yo, a lot yo, of fluid. Yo, lose a lot of fluid. Listen, I was like, oh my god! So I opened the passenger side of the door. I was like, yo, get in. No, <laughs> on the spot. On the spot. Because I was like, yo, I never heard nobody like him. So I said, Nah, he was the craziest. So he and then said, the shit he would say was insane, right? Listen, so listen. Yo, Raekwon, Raekwon, I'm coming to you in five minutes. Five Raekwon, minutes. Raekwon, salute, brother. Salute, Ray. So listen, so, so I tell him, uh, so I tell him, boom, I go like this. So Punk gets in the car and he starts telling me, about his whole entire life. This is the first second I met him. Like I never met another man open up to another man like that. I don't understand. People don't understand. They can think what they want. Like I never seen him. It's like I that feel you pull like out, you, 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 you pull out the realest in motherfuckers though. He felt yeah, like this, he felt like he needed to tell you that. Yo, man, he told me about an uncle that was, <laughs> that was rich. That when he went to his uncle and ask him for money or ask him for his job, his uncle told him, eat rocks. He told me all this shit. First second I met him, he was telling me about, you know how he grew up, his mom's is this and this and that, and I was looking at him, and he was like, yo, man, I, I'm, you know, I'm a real nigga. I've just been looking for the real crew. You gonna be my big brother? That's it, hold me down, this and this and that. And from that day- And he wouldn't take no for an answer. He wouldn't take no for an answer. You was his big brother. No, that's it. Like that's you know how he mean? was. Like, that's how he was. You know what I mean? And I and, and and we and that's it. To the day that's we died, it. that's we it. brothers. You know what I'm saying? That's it. A hundred million percent. 
I'll tell you a, a, a crazy story. Um, no, nah, I can't tell them that story. It's too raw. It's too raw. I, I can't tell them that. It's too much. <laughs> right. Yo, so let me get the Raekwon. Don't go Get the Raekwon. Right Salute. Love on. you, brother. Because I know Ray's going to get missing. Yeah, I'll Ray got right some shit to on. say. Love you, brother. One. I love you more. Raekwon the chef. Where he at? Raekwon the chef. Hold up. Hold up. This is that capital punishment. This is that capital punishment. Big pun, 22 years. Woo! Ray Kwan is Jack Boy. Got it, Gina. What up, Yo, baby? Ray. Damn, man. What's going on in this quarantine, huh? We quarantining together, baby. Staying safe. Staying safe. Yo, stay before anything, before anything, first and foremost, I want to definitely say rest in peace to our young brother, the godson, man. Fred the that God. touched me, man. That touched me, man. God bless him, man. You know what I'm saying? He was definitely a ill, a super ill lyricist. Like, he was so clever. You know, I worked with him a couple of times, but you know it really touched me, though, Joe? He wrote a song about me. It's called Ray. Word. One of my peoples had hit me with it. When I tell you it broke my heart, man, it's like tears started flying. You know what I'm saying? It's like, yo, man. We gonna miss that brother, man, but we gonna keep his legacy sharp, cause he you know was definitely, what? definitely a New York spitter to the fullest, though. You know. You know and what I know crazy y'all is? Was... I watch uh, Jim Jones put him up today, and Jim Jones said some. Shit. This is Jim Jones, Dipset, balling, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, East Side, by high. <laughs> you know, Dipset, legends. Mm-hmm. So he said he put up a picture of Ray, of, of uh, not Ray, God bless. A friend the Garson and said, um, yo, thank you for inspiring me again and make me want to rap again. I, I used to I read that. fuck with you so I so you you inspired me to rap again and step my game up. Right. And I ain't gonna lie to you. Whenever I had to do with somebody, like if I had to do Fat Joke the all the way up remix, I knew Jay-Z was going up, was getting on. Right. I write my rhyme, I call Fred to approve it. Wow. And nice. Fred would be like, yeah, son, yeah, ain't nobody coming after that shit. <laughs> like, you know, like, you know, so Fred, to me, was the greatest punchline rapper, underground rapper of 2020. It's just Fact. my opinion. Super There's a Fact. lot of guys out there, and I was saying it when he was alive. So this ain't yeah. no yeah. this ain't no clout chasing or nothing. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. Just, That's right. That's you know. Right. And uh, yo, Ray, I want to thank you, right? Because me and you, we started in the game. I remember one time when I had Flo Joe and, and, and y'all just dropped uh, Protect Your Neck, right? And I remember the promoter gave me 500 and he gave y'all 500. And I, it was like 15 of y'all split for $500. Word. And I was sitting there and I was like, damn. <laughs> I was like, yo, how these niggas gonna eat, right? Like, I was like, Jeez. I was like, yo, how they gonna eat? And sure enough, my 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 rise to the top took a little longer than yours. Mm. You guys just shot out. You was like four platinum first album, everybody dropping platinum albums, everybody going, and I was like underground, like Fred the Godson, floating mm. all night was underground, right? And um the thing I love most about you is no matter if I was underground and I wasn't selling records like you on your level, every time I asked you to come through, you always came through. Minutes later, if I called you and I'd be like, yo, Ray, I need you on a song. You show right to the studio and you get busy. And Thank we you. did um we did Firewater. <laughs> That's the first song Pun ever been on. You know that was the first time you introduced me to him, too, that night. That was the first time I seen Punt. And you was like, yo, I want my man to spit for you. I was like, who's your man? So you was like, yo, his name is Punisher. So I was like, yo, yeah, I want him. Yo, he spit. And I looked at you. And you looked at me. And I was like, that's it. And ever since then... Ever since then, to this day, me and you been close as fuck based on that. You know what I'm saying? Because you always felt like 
I gave your brother an opportunity to be heard with, on, with me on the record. And I felt the same because, you know, I fuck with you. You know what I mean? You was dope. Even when you felt like you was at your smallest, you was always at your largest with me. So I'm looking at you like, oh, yeah, that's a Bronx warrior right there. I better go over there and connect with that. You know what I mean? Plus, you know, uh, you know, I'm, I'm big with the with the Latino world, you know? My right-hand man back in the days is Latin, you know what I mean? Get busy, too. I mean, on some other shit, but I always had that relationship with a lot of Spanish cats. So when I met you, it was like brother to brother, you know what I mean? Mano to mano. And, um, yeah, I remember you was like, yo, I want to put him on that record. I was like, you better put him on that record. And Firewater was it. Firewater. Firewater. Firewater was it. And I'm gonna tell an ill story because you cause 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 you are on here and we might as well just this is a joker moment. Um mm -hmm. after firewater dropped, Biggie had called me. I'll never forget. I was in the uh New Jersey Turnpike. I was going, you know, remember back in the days we used to go do shows from Virginia back to New York. Like it was like that just that he was in nice. Exactly. Yeah, so I used to go down to North Carolina <laughs> every weekend. Every weekend I get the fantastic and I go down to I have a show in North Carolina, one uh -huh. in Virginia, one in DC, come back home every weekend. And um I remember one time I was in the van and I was headed out of Biggie called me. He was like in LA or something. He was like, Yo, man, yo, what's up with your man, that kid the punisher? So I'm like <laughs> See, that's what we do, I, man, the punisher. The I punisher. was waiting for I was waiting. You know me, I don't push nothing on nobody. You know Biggie, the biggest rap on earth. Right, I'm like, right. I'm like, word, Big? He was like, yo, that nigga nice. Yeah, yeah. So I was like, yo, Big, I, you know, I ain't want to bother you with nothing, but, you know, it would be great if I get you on a song with him. Right. And Big said, yo, when I get back, I'll rock out with your man. Your man is dead nice. Mm. And then that's around the time Biggie had passed away and all that. So yeah, they never God met each other and never rocked. But mm. I'm telling you, I'm telling the people of the world, Biggie knew who Pum was before he passed. Absolutely. Yeah, he was going to do a song with him because Biggie never lied to me, but he told me he'll do a song with him. Of and course. that's when Biggie's number one, two, and three, like the biggest. Right. Right. Man, I wish that shit would have went down. I'm telling you, man, yo, he was official, man. I mean, yo, it was like his voice. He had that voice and then the flow. He, he had a different kind of flow where it's like, it, it was just a certain kind of speed that he was doing it at, but he was so clever. And to me, that's what caught me out there. It was like, yo, different kind of flow. But at the same time, his wordplay is just, it was remarkable. It was like, it only took one verse for me to really know that he got it. And, and for you to really just let me get on the record with him, I was excited because I'm like, damn, this nigga, he, damn, what the fuck I'm going to say? Because that flow is like, it's an untouchable flow. And all you know, I so we was, yo, Ray, what? we was working on his album, Capital Punishment. And mm. Around that time? No, 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 oh. no. I'm talking about Capital Punishment. Right. Cats ain't really know him. Like, right, like, right. Like, a, like. Um, Buster Rhymes or Wyclef or Joe the Singer, people ain't know them. They was rocking off the strength of my relationship with them, coming to do a song with this guy they never even heard before. Right, right. But yeah. every time they came in, we would play them four songs off the album. Motherfuckers be like, "Oh no, this shit out of here. This this nigga out of here. Where yo. do I rock? Where do He's I sing?" Animal. They was all like, "Yo." Put me on that shit now. Animalistic, animalistic rap. I love it, man. Your question: What's your favorite big pun song? I don't got a favorite. See, one thing about pun, he made albums. You know what I'm saying? So it's like I was always the dude to study his body of work. So it was many more. You know what I mean? It was it was definitely more than one though. You know, I didn't really know too many of the titles because I was just getting caught up in just the bounce the flow, but it was definitely more than one record, though. Definitely yeah. more than one record. I saw you. I saw you. You was probably the only guy in the comments more than me in the uh, Babyface Teddy Riley battle. <laughs> <laughs> hey, yo, <laughs> I didn't even see you in the RZA battle. I saw you in 
I popped you, in. Let me ask you a question. How you guys held your composure with the RZA battle with Primo? Because y'all wasn't going crazy on there at all. None of y'all. I was looking at the cut. What? How did you keep your composure? You know what it was? It was just that it was a blow for blow type of situation. And it's like, first and foremost, it's like, we caught RZA before that. Me and Ghost called him, said, yo, listen, homie, don't fuck up on this. Oh, said, yo, it's all about the selection. You know what I mean? And we knew that Primo is, is he know, you can't just run through him like that. And you know, at the end of the day, I was up in it, but RZA didn't use the selection of joints that me and Ghost chose. You know what I mean? Chose wrong. So he came with a whole different, whole different chemistry. So you know, I'm just sitting back eating the popcorn and being like, you know, praying that it's gonna be a tie. Other than RZA just get white. You know what I mean? Because you, you know, when, when 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 Scott Storch battled, uh, I was all in the comments going crazy for Scott. You know, that's my brother. I was all yeah, in there going, watch him. This, this, I can't take, I said sorry to Manny Fresh in New Orleans a million times. I can't take it back. I was going back. See? So when they be like, you know, your man is in these comments too. Don't, don't get it fucked up. Swiss is in here somewhere. And he trying to gas me to battle niggas. I said, yo, I'm going to lose friends behind this shit. Because I, if I'm battling a nigga and I'm seeing comments where they're like, fuck yo, this, this, that, well, fuck you. Like, I'm going to hit it. Hey, yo, Ray, it ain't going to be no good. Yo, it ain't going to nah, be no good. Nah, but you know. I'm going to just stay a spectator. I mean, see, let me tell you something. Let me tell you something about those battles. Let me tell you something about those battles I've been checking out. Number one, when you battling, it's like a fight. You can't wait for a nigga to punch you in your face. You know what I mean? No. It's like, it's a fight. Grab an ear. Bite an ear. Scratch an eyeball out. Jab him. Cut him do whatever it's like sometimes they be too friendly you know what i mean and i know that at the end of the day that these are our brothers and we love them to death but competition is competition it's like it's like your man I'll joe you, you know what i'm saying yeah what you saying? Something. your man your man can smile some people could think he's he clowns around too much but when your man t-pain went first and he played Welcome to the good life. This is my life, oh, my man. Shit. I said, see, I said, this nigga going for the kill. It, yeah, right. he cutting. He, he pulled out his knife right there. He pulled out his knife quick. Pull out his knife instantly. Like, yo, right. yo, yo, guys, I'm not playing with you got. And then your man, little John, ain't come to play. He threw, yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, <laughs> see, yeah, I was see? Like, oh. <laughs> now see, that's what I'm talking about. It's like yeah, it's a, it's a, you know what I mean? It's like to me, if it was up to me, no talking, man. No talking. So really, when I was watching it go down, I was loving it. You know what I'm saying? You know, of course, you I call like on my much people. Respect. It was at one point I was waiting for somebody to just be like, "Hey, yo, what's up, man?" Like, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right, right. You know, right. I was waiting for like somebody to go bad at some point, man. But they, it was too much respect. Too, just like when yeah, you're watching too them, many giants. You know, it's, it's too crazy. giants. It's crazy because these, these versus battles are really like boxing matches. Yeah, like, you see yeah. them fights when they respect each other too much? Yeah. Like, Tab Judah against Roy Jones, and, they res and they're like, yo, too much respect for each other. Too nah, man, we got... That's why I can't battle, because I'm going bad. I'm talking about this is my friend. I'm going bad. They never going to get it back. They're going to be like, nah, I can't fuck with crack. Crack, crack the ox. He but see, that's what we that's life. what we come from with it. We come from that cloth, and I know that they was making it more about the culture of brothers that really impacted the game, you know, playing some joints, though. But I was loving every minute of it, though, but I was still a little shaky because it was like, I know how Riz it is, you know what I mean? Like, the joints I would have picked, it probably would have made it a little bit more interesting for Primo, you know, but, yeah, but if think, you look I at it, both, I, I, I think I think it was like a tie, you know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, 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 for sure. For and sure. the craziest and shit trust me, that, look, listen, and that wasn't even half they stack. Oh, no, no, no. You didn't, we ain't even going to they stacks. Nah, you I see was, what I'm saying? I was so, nervous. 
I was nervous. I was sitting there like, yo, what's going to happen? Because this is too much. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, Primo, and then that's how I felt with uh, Babyface and Teddy Riley. I felt like, so you know, Puff came on here. Mm -hmm. That Joe said, he said he ready to battle Dr. Dre. Woo! That's the Woo. talk. He you know what it. I'd rather see, though? Don't get me wrong. I love Dre. I would like to see, because Puff made a lot of, he made a lot of um, commercial records, too, right? Yes, sir. Him, him and Jermaine Dupri, I think. That's what people Jermaine say, that, man. I mean, you know, Dre, of course, is a wolf. You know, I know he capable to hold his own. But Jermaine and Puff, it's like they both, to me, it's like, it's like Jermaine was like the Puff of the South. Yeah, and, he was doing and, and, the, He was doing the Mariah Carey's. He was doing the Usher's. He was doing all that. You know what I'm saying? And you know, and yeah, I get it. Um, you see what I'm saying? But I think that I I think Puffy's looking for a bigger draw, like yeah, the, uh, Puffy against Dre. You know what I mean? And J J Dr. Dre got Fifty Cent. Yeah. M and M Records. Yeah. N.W.A. Yeah. Crime. He got listen. No. I'm not saying he ain't a wolf. But he's a wolf. He's you know what I'm saying? He's you just saying Puff gonna come with that band around? I nah, Puff. Him. No, I'm just saying Puff's selection of of mainstream and hard. You know what I mean? It's like they both really got the same kind of material in that same kind of way. Well, I think Puff probably got a little bit more harder shit based on the shit that he was around. A little I'm bit say, more. Though. But those say, are still those are still good. Competitive battles, if you ask me, though. I'm thinking you know? if Kanye and Pharrell ever get to it. See, these is when wars. See, this is when it's called knife fighting. Now, now you knife fighting. This is a knife fight. Puff and you see that movie? What's that movie we watched? My uh, my, uh as he, like three times. Extraction. You seen Extraction? I just seen it last night. Oh my god. <laughs> Stupid. Yo, you see the gun? Nigga smack the gun and shoot like oh nigga. Now look, to stick now look, the knife imagine. Stick it. <laughs> I'm just saying that's that Kanye against Pharrell. That's yeah. That, that's that John yeah. Wick distraction. Yeah, those are good. Those are good ones though. But I want to see. I'm I'm gonna be tuned into that Dre and and, and Puff if they if they sign off. It's definitely gonna be a wicked one to see for sure though. You know, All right, my brother, yo, Ray, I love you. I'm gonna let some more people get on talk about pun. You know, I Salute. love you, my brother. Yo, Salute. rest in peace, our brother, big pun, man. 22 later, right? 22 right. years later. Wu Tang you, and Terror Squad, Baya con Dios. Baya con Dios. Baya con Dios. <laughs> yo, man, that's one of my best friends. Clark, can I see you? One of my best friends in the world. Uh, we go back since day one. The man was so. He's always, you know, he was four-time platinum. I was selling 10 records. He would come do any song for me. Uh, I appreciate the loyal ones, man. That You know, the Raekwon, the chef, is uh, the epitome. Uh, I had two of my favorites on here today. Yo, Fleazy Nation, Savvy, Savvy Davis. I had actually three. I had Tone Sunshine, I had Nori, and I had Ray. Um, these, are, these are big boys. In the game. Hold on one second. Let me see who's on the check-in. <laughs> now I gotta be somebody. Um, you know what I'm gonna give? I'm gonna give DJ Ed a shot right now. Yo, DJ Ed, tell me real quick, Bronx 163rd. DJ Ed. DJ Ed. He said DJ Ed. Who? He said Yo, what you DJ doing? Sleeping? Who? Yeah. Yo. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, you finally got picked. You finally got the room with you sleeping, man. Yo, I didn't even know I was on this shit, my nigga. I ain't gonna lie to you, bro. Yeah, you request it, nigga. You request it. That shit was Yo, like an hour ago. That shit was like an hour ago, bro. Tell me a funny bro. story about Pun, because you was always around us over there on Southern Boulevard. I see JB already came on, Hobie Baby. Tell me a funny story about Pun. So I can get to the next guys, man. Um, besides him snapping on me and you every day at the store. And besides that, <laughs> killing us every day at the store. 
couldn't you couldn't say not one fat joke that would not kill them. He always killed us with these jokes, bro. Always. And snapping on Brim and snapping on us every single day, bro. Sitting on that white paint bucket, Mo, with the stickers on it, Mo. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How you doing out there? You doing good in quarantine, DJ? Yeah, we good. We good. Barbershop is open. I got my cut. Word. Be careful, good, man. Bro. Be careful. I'm in and out, uh, though. Rest in peace, Fred the Godson. I seen the joint he had did with you. Yeah, And I man. seen you repping Fred. God bless Fred. You know? And yeah. uh, what's, your, what's your favorite uh, Big Pun song? Firewater. Firewater, day one. Yeah, because I was there with you when when you did that song. Remember that? I don't remember, but you I know you was with us every day, so I'm figuring you was there. Yeah, I was there with the whole thing, but I'm saying that was one of my favorite because I was there and like that was pretty much the first record that he got that he did that, that everybody know, you know what I'm saying? Like the world know who Big Pun is. Yeah. Nobody knew who Pun was without that record. If that record had never dropped, that nobody would knew who Pun was, bro. Yeah, but he took off on that, man. And after that, man, the feeling was, he, he was riding. You know what I'm saying? Nothing like Big Pun, that energy. You know what I'm saying? Nah, never, bro. And you've been, you've been the same since day one, since you gave me the name DJ Ed. <laughs> I gave you that name, DJ Ed? At 13 years old, you came to my yeah. house. You, you out there my, with uh, you came to you my out. house with Bio to do a freestyle in my house, and my parents were not home, and you did a freestyle for me, and then you said, DJ Ed, don't ever let nobody hear this shit. That's crazy. And, as, and, I, ha LA and I have too. it on cassette. I have it on cassette. Hey yo, check this out. I'll talk to you soon. All right, Ed. You stay safe. All right, bro. Love what you. Up? I love you too. Yo, man, let me tell you some current events, man. People in Puerto Rico been getting at me saying that uh, uh, there's hundreds of thousands of people trying to get stimulus checks, and the, govern the government has not given one single stimulus check to anybody in Puerto Rico. Um, uh, that's crazy right there. Um, I don't know why. You know, it's United States of America. Why they always seem to shit on Puerto Rico uh, and never look out for the Boricuas who's working hard, government uh, workers. You know, it's, it's just crazy that they never, ever, you know, every time something goes down, we never get the support we need. Um, so, vaya mi gente Boricua, ya yo hablo pa ustedes. Que no te están mandando la dinero por la uh, coronavirus. Te quiero mucho. Aguántate. Quédate fuerte. Uh, ojalá que algo viene uh, para allá para ustedes con the stimulus checks. All right. Let me see who's on the check it. Shout out to Fan Mio, F A N M I O, the sponsor every time. What up, Joey? Hey, what's Can going you on? Me? You got I met light you on. twice in Miami. Hold on. I don't know how to put this fucking light on. I'm outside. We can't see. It's okay. I'm in Miami. Miami. I'm in Miami. But I don't know if you can see me. I'm like outside right now. Yeah, you got to But be listen. Safe. Have you been on the quarantine? Yeah, I've been in the corner, seen in the house, barbecuing, drinking, chilling on the block over here. Nothing, not um, doing too much. But I met you like two or three times in live. I have pictures of us. <laughs> God bless. God bless. You got You're any, the best. any favorite records from Big Fun? I, you know what? You're going to laugh. I like, I don't want to be a player. That's my shit. I don't know why. I know it's like the most basic one, but like, I know his music, but I love that shit. Well, because you know, my little king. brother. It's been 22 years since he dropped this album. So I he's know. celebrating Big Pun's album. 
I know, and you know, in the Bronx, they got that little the mural of the him right Shout out there. To the tax crew. The Shout tax out crew to the tax. That's they right. got it right there, right Mama, there. You be in the safe. Bronx. You stay in that quarantine. Don't be in the All streets. Right. All right, baby. Sometimes we get some, some you know. Sometimes it get, you know, Logan City. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Y'all gotta stop every time somebody come in there. Y'all say it's the Logan. <laughs> They got love, man. We got love for everybody, man. Oh, uh, so yeah, man. You know, uh, I'll tell you a story. Uh, we got not Jimmy, Jimmy Boss Cafe, y'all, Billy. So we got, we got nominated for the Grammy. And, uh, and, uh, so we went to LA, we rented the mansion. And uh, shout out Steve Rifkin, everybody at Live. We had the big mansion in Beverly Hills, pool. And um, I remember we got up. That's some funny pictures you see of me and Pun. We looking like cartoons and um, cartoon characters. And so we go to the Grammys. Pun, Pun had his hair done all night. He had like the finger waves. I mean, we did everything. This is the moment we've been... Um, We've been, we, we, this is the moment we've been waiting for, you know what I'm saying? And uh, we want, hey, yo, Remy, we want all up. There she goes. She said, y'all wore the most horrible outfits ever. Y'all, Remy, at the time, it was fly. It was like pinstripe gangster suits. So we go to the Grammys. Yo, Rem, why are you shitting on our outfits, man? At the time, it was fly. Wow. Yo, Rem, I got some pictures Bruh. of you back in the days. You don't like the pictures either. Like, like. Right. That's why I don't bring them up. Why are you bringing it up? <laughs> don't bring it up. <laughs> don't bring it up. Yo, Rem. Yo, Rem, I wanted to tell him this story. We finally made it to the Grammys. And okay. um, I remember we walked in there. And Ricky Mark <laughs> was doing Living La Vida Loca. He was, yeah. and, and it was every celebrity you ever, it's the first yeah. time we ever went to some big shit. And we mm. walk up in there yeah. and we find out he had just lost the Grammy. And um, I just got there. We waited all our lives to be at some shit like that. Your shit freezing up, Rem. Oh, there you go. We had waited all our lives to be in some shit like that. And he found out he lost. We didn't even get to sit down. He was like, yo, fuck these people, twin. Let's go. I'm like, yo, we bought these fucking expensive suits. You got the finger waves. Me and the Grammy. Kirk Franklin over here. Everybody over here. He was like, nah, fuck these people, man. We out. We lost the Grammy. Fuck them. So that's that's when he had put on that record, uh, uh, lost the Grammy next week, bringing home three for the family. Watch me. And, uh, that was a crazy moment because I really wanted to stay um, at the Grammy, but I had to keep it real with Pun and, and leave with him. But I was sick. It's almost like if you take your friends to the club and, and you really want to go to the club and they don't let you in. And um, you're like, damn, I, 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 I want to go in this club, but I got to leave with these guys. Yo, Ram, your shit freezing up. Yo, Ram, your Wi-Fi don't want to work for us, man. <laughs> what happened? I can't. You freezing up. When I be on live by myself, I'm going to click good. off and then, and then click, click. As soon as I get on the I Joker. I know, yeah, but how's it me? The, the Joker show got the fucking clear Wi-Fi. Don't do that. It's too much. It's too me. much. I got to see my goddaughter. She got to tell me about pun. She got to, you know what I mean? We got to hear all that shit from Remy. You know what I'm saying? You know, you know, my, my goddaughter. You know, she was discovered by Big Pun. Remy mom. Remy. It's my goddaughter. I got to see my baby. Not her. Remy does.
this shit would have skipped and all that. All right, how about now? Yo, Ram, man, you be heating up the airwaves too much. You know, when they see us, it's always a home run. <laughs> now, you know, we can't, like, yo, Ram, we can't true. lose. Every time we true. are some shit, the streets go crazy. Listen, first of all, pun, pun, pun was definitely crazy. Everyone tells the good stories. Everybody knows he was a comedian, a jokester. I remember the one time, the one time ever in life that Pun got me mad. And he's one of those, like, when he not mad no more, like, that's it. It's over. Like, you can't still be mad. So we was having a water fight. He orchestrated. Like, he started. It was a water fight in the studio. So, you know he go, he go overboard. Like, he's like, first of all, I'm trying to explain something like Pun. I am a black girl. You don't pour water on black girls' hair. Like, you don't do that. Like, that's, like, violation. <laughs> like, No, nah, that's, that's, that's go get violation. the Vaseline, take the earrings off. Let's fight. So, so he ODs or whatever. And I don't know how I caught him slipping. Like, you know how, like, Pun, Pun used to, like, like, he'd be going, and then he'll just, like, nod off, like, for like five minutes and then he'd be back charging. Like he'd take like a little break so he could charge up and come back and violate some more. So I was like, all right, I'm gonna wait. I'm gonna wait till he take his little nap and I'm gonna violate. So I waited until he took his nap, caught him, caught him good. So he's sitting there, he was tight. I knew he was tight, but he didn't want to act like he was tight. So I'm like, now I'm feeling good. Like I'm happy. Like, you know me, I'm I'm good until I'm mad. So I feel like you was as mad as I was. Now we even. Yo, it's like, Four hours later, nobody's even thinking about it, yo. There's no water around, so I think I'm safe. It's no water, it's no juice, it's no nothing. Why your man got a cup of ice? He's chewing the ice, because, you know, he used to do weird shit, like chew, like chew rocks. So he's chewing ice, like crunching it. Fills his mouth up with ice. Spits it in his hand and throws it down the back of my shirt. Oh, my God. Yo, when I tell you I wanted to kill him. You blacked like, out, Rem? I was so mad. I wanted to leave. Now, mind you, I'm still a kid. I didn't even know how to drive, more or less have a car. So I'm tight. I'm like, call my cab right now. So I'm trying to, he's like, nope. Yo, he held me hostage. Literally hostage. Like, he I held you kidnapped. hostage? I was kidnapped. I was being held against my I'll will. I'll tell you the one time he caught me, he never, ever played with me. <laughs> Even though he used to fuck with niggas, never, ever, ever played with me in his life. So one day we in Jimmy's Cafe, and we sit down to have dinner. I walk in the bathroom, and I come back. So I go to drink the Diet Pepsi. This shit was so salty. It salty? tasted like, like <laughs> salt water. I already know. Yo, you know I took the table, threw it with people in the restaurant, threw it in the air. Threw it. I had to make the big, I said, look, <laughs> I don't make the biggest movie right now. This dude it's is going to abuse me. Oh, it's like, over. It's over. No, nah, it was over. So I knew, yo, I had to make it clear. Like, don't play with me. Yo, boy, don't fucking play with me. Nah. I'm telling you, don't play. Well, I couldn't make a movie. First of all, not only was I a whole kid. Back then, I weighed about 100 pounds soaking wet. He just held me hostage for like two days so I wasn't mad no more. Like he's like, when you're not mad, then you could go home. I'm not letting you leave mad at me. So I had to like get really unmad. Like you know, you're like, I'm not right, I'm not mad no more. I'm not mad. I'm not mad. And they're like, nah, you still mad. I can tell you're you. Still you're still mad, you're still mad. Your nostrils are flary. I'm like, yeah, I wanna go home. Oh. <laughs> to the point I wasn't mad no more. I was like, all right, you got You know it. something you're about Pun right. is he always wanted us with him. Never. Like, I, I don't leave. think he never went to sleep alone. Like, I never think... Cannot, no, you can't leave. Like, when I was listening to Tony's story, the day you meet him, the same thing. After the day you meet him, you never go home again. Like, that's it. <laughs> it, was like one of those, it was like one of those fairy tales when you get to the castle, you can never leave again. You can never go back. Yo, like, he, be doing, he used to do that to me. I, I come to his house. But you know me, Nori say all the time, I was like the fun police. Like, they was like... You was the fun police. You really was. It was like, you was the, you was like really bad. And the crazy thing is, I didn't even know. Like, everybody else used to tell me, mind you, this is when Tony Sunshine was said, like, I, I don't even know when I started calling Tony, Tony Sunshine. Like, he was R&B. So he used to be telling me everything about, I'd be like, yeah, I'm telling you, 
you're not gonna be able to do this like he was the one that like it was me tony pun reef like it was just certain people that was just always around so I used to get all the stories about like, yo, yeah, because when Joe comes, we're not going to be able to do this. I used to be like, what? He's such a bad hater. And then, you know. Once you, once you really got to know me, you knew why I was the fun police. My then thing I was, knew why you was the fun police. You still you still the fun police to this day. Listen, let me tell you something. The pro, your, your, as he, and my executive producer, Azariah uh, Malone <laughs> Cartagena, is going like this. Like, I'm the fun police. <laughs> Now, you got to understand, when I came up from the streets, all my friends went to jail for the minimum was 20 years. And I watched them all throw their lives away. My best friend to this day is in jail for life. So I knew shit that they was, that, that y'all was doing could have got y'all jammed the fuck up. So I was coming up in there like, yo, t yo, yo, pun, you cannot do this. Like, I don't think you understand y'all going to go to jail. Same thing, so I used to worry about these guys because, let's face the facts, they was getting drunk, they was getting high, and they had 20 machine guns in, in, in it. Like, yo, they I never seen, go... I never seen a machine gun. I don't know what you're talking about. You don't know what I'm talking about? I don't All know. All right, what you're allegedly. <laughs> yo, yo, Rem, I'm like... Allegedly, allegedly, there were telephone books stacked up against the wall with two by fours, and people was in the basement shooting machine guns. Allegedly. Yo, that's like crazy, it. man. The niggas have like their own dungeon, a, a, a shootout thing. Like, yo, and I'm going up like, in Allegedly, like, niggas had a homemade gun jail. <laughs> I be like, yo, going to jail forever. So everybody be like, yo, here come this nigga hating. I wasn't hating. I was trying to protect y'all. Like, I was up in there like, yo. I, I concur. I agree. I yeah, remember looking the time. back, yes. Looking back, yes. But then, like, it was... The funnest day to me is like when I used to finally get to go home and I hang with my friends and I'd be like, yo, we drove around for like three hours in the back of the of the bins throwing eggs at people on the two four line. Like that was that was the highlight of my week. Like I in yo the big body with pun and we're egging people on the two yo, four the line. Cops used to come fun. up to me. Like if I was like the fun police. The cops will pull me over whenever I go around punts. I'll be like, look, everyone knows the gray Benz is puns. He cannot <laughs> shoot old ladies with the water soakers. He's going to get locked up, Joe. And they love pun for living there and all that. They, they wasn't hating on him for nothing. They be like, yo, he's going to go to jail, Joe. Talk to these people. Oh, my God. I go over there. Yeah. I remember one time I said, uh, so I remember one time I told you this story. Uh, uh, nah, I won't tell you that story right there. I won't tell you that story. Nah, the people can't hear that story. But, uh, <laughs> I'll tell you one thing. I, I, I said, you know, Pun, he was like, it was crazy. I bet one time I went to Jimmy's, right? I don't, I don't want to scare everybody because, you know, this Corona vision, we trying to inspire the people. But, right. you know, we're telling you some big Pun stories you never heard. But, so one night I go to Jimmy's, mm -hmm. right? I think maybe one deep or two deep, one one deep. And you know how we had Jimmy's. We had 200 dudes in there. It, it was too much. Right. So this night, I don't know why I go in there. Nobody we really, really know is it's in there. Jimmy's. And I'm like That's too deep. I'm telling you the truth. I'm in there. You know how I am to this day. I'm stupid, icy, everything. So I'm using the bathroom. So this big dude, I mean, these dudes was big, like, Football player dudes, right? So he was like, oh, they let guys like you in the hood? I said, they let me in the hood? I run the hood. What are you talking about? I run this shit. <laughs> oh, word. This, this, that. So I'm like, so, you know, we get into talking too crazy that we can't talk in IG. Mm -hmm. You know, your mother's, uh, you know, they, like, we go bad, right? right? So then, like, about an hour later, I forget about an hour later, I bump into these dudes in the club again, and they're like, yeah, all right, money. Yeah, yeah, you still here? Like, yo, they was like trying to bully me, like, right? No, I'm, not man. you. No, man, yeah. Yo, bro, I got maybe a million dollars in jury on. I forget whoever I was with wasn't tough. It was a regular person. I was like, boom. But I refused to make the Mayday call. I refused to call dudes <laughs> and be like, yo, come down. Yo, yo, yo. I didn't, I, I wouldn't do it. 
Right? You didn't want to push the button. No, I wouldn't do it because I, I, it felt like I was a sucker if I did that, right? How the dawn got to call everybody for help? So I remember end of the night, I come out of Jimmy's. These dudes are following me. They come out right behind me. These dudes was gigantic, man. So they come out, they go, boom, they say something slick. And I'm like, yo, my man, it is what, you know, I'm going bad. You know, like, just imagine the cameras is off, Remy going bad. Joe going like disgusted. The shit I'm saying is like, boom. But realistically, they could pound me up. They're like seven foot tall, cop diesel. They look like NFL players, right? Yeah, and plus whoever you was with, they wasn't tough. They was they, they were was soft, right. soft, right? <laughs> so, and I don't know how weird that was. So as I'm walking out, we keep talking back and forth. It's definitely going to go down. All you hear is the sound system. Fire and desire. You you hear the uh the uh the the, the Rick James and uh Tina Marie right she's singing fire and desire they going right. you know on the, the slow jam sneak of the speaker banging off the things all I know is the Ben stopped the door open Pun had two hammers in his hand one in each hand he was like yo twin. Who twin? Who twin? And he had this face on, man. Who? Who want to get it? <laughs> who want to get it? This big fun double platinum in the middle of the Bronx. Like, he was like, who? But who twin? Who? And it was obvious. It was these big dudes. I was like, nah, your punch. It was nobody. I'm like, your punch is all good. These guys want it, twin? These guys want it? They fucking with you? I was like, nah, your punch. Let's just go. It's all good. They know better. Everybody know better. Yo, this nigga, somebody must have called Pun mm -hmm. and told him, yo, Joe's about to get it out here bad. Because he pulled up 4.30 in the morning, half to two. You know, Pun, you know, it saved my life, you know? <laughs> Man, and yo, Rev, and yes. uh, you Let's know, we tell a part. story all the time. Capital Punishment, what's your favorite record off that album? Dream Shadow Room. Dream Shatterer, mm -hmm. my shit is You Ain't a Killer. You know, Dream Shatterer had another beat to it. Um, Dream, I'm a, Dream Shatterer, because like so just the things that he was that. saying, and I'm going to tell you, Dream Shatterer, the first time I heard it, my brother Raye was singing it. And he's like, no. You see the, the board head, you see the big pun on the forehead. The BP like, shot off the board head. And I'm just like, head. I'm, and I hear him say, I'm like, first of all, like, cause he, that's, I started rapping because my brother used to rap. And I'm sitting there like, when did he get this nice? Like, hold on, wait, wait, what's happening? <laughs> so I go in the room and I'm like, yo, what's that? And he's like, yo, nah, that's pun. And he, he's the one that actually put me on to pun. And it's crazy because I was listening to like the story that, um, when you were talking to earlier and he was saying how, well, pun stood for for being a Latino rapper, but just being from the Bronx, period. Because for so long, Nas, at the time, Nas was from Queens, Nori was from Queens, Marv D was from Queens, Big was from Brooklyn, the whole Junior Mafia. Like so, it was like the Bronx was like the Bronx started it, but the Bronx was quiet for a minute. It was a desert. So, so when Pun came, it was like, oh, it's lit. And and what he was doing, it wasn't even like he was doing it on some regular, just playing with it was the words, it was the flow, it was it was just everything that that came with it. And then he was getting on records with all the people that everybody thought was the nicest. And oh damn, like. Band from TV, old Dan, John Blaze, old Dan, like all of these records, and it, it was it was just a wonderful thing for the Bronx. Period. Yeah, and then Not we had we had J Lo come out after that, and people oh, don't okay. know me and Pun was in pretty much all of J Lo sessions on the first album. First of all, that's the first I saw. The first time I met you was at a J Lo video. Pun had me come. He called me. I had literally just met him the day before. And he tells me, he calls me, he goes, um, he wants to wear cornrows for the J-Lo video. So I'm like, okay. 
He's like, come on, all black girls know how to braid. Like, yo, just come over and do my braids. I'm like, well, first of all, <laughs> they all don't know how to braid. I happen to know how to braid, but I'm just letting you know, they all don't know how to braid. And then I get there, and he wants this intricate. First of all, he has the finest, silkiest hair known to mankind. And he wants these elaborate braids. I'm like, yo, Pine, your hair's not going to do that. Like, I can't make you do that. I'm not that skilled. And he was just like, pretty much barking on me. Like, yo, like, come on. I want the swirl. This is the J-Lo video. It was a movie. It was, it was a movie. It was a movie. Everything, I think everything with Pun was extra. He did everything extra. He did everything exaggerated. The first day I met him, I went to his house. He had one of the ex most expensive dogs that I've never seen again to this day. I've never seen the never, dog. It was like seen. a blue dog. He had a they blue were like dog. Blue, bluish gray, but he had several of them just running around in front of the house like if they was pigeons in the Bronx. Like he did everything to the. Hey, yo, let me tell you a story. The he man, lived a life. The man, the man, I never made a dollar off punt. I finally got a hundred thousand dollar check. He was with me. So he was like, "Yeah, twin, congratulations, this and that." Yo, could you stop and for them over here in the concourse? We stopped. It's a jewelry shop, Gallery Two Thousand. So he go the whole time we riding up. He's like, "Yo, you love me, twin. You love me, twin." I was like, "Yo, pun, I love you, man. You my brother. I love you." He was like, "You love me, twin? Nah, for real. You love me, twin." I'm like, "Yo, I love you, you my brother." He pulls up in this jewelry shop. When I tell you the one hundred thousand dollar check that I made, How he made me buy my iced out Rolex for one hundred and five thousand dollars. <laughs> <laughs> yo, yo, Ren, yo, Ren, nah, he was an abuser, man. He was. A, I'm like, yo, I already man. knew he made you buy the watch. <laughs> yo, he was like, yo, I've been looking at this watch. If you love me, you buy me this watch. I'm like, yo, pun. I had. I, I wind up coming five G's out my pocket. For the watch, nah, the guy, you know, he was a special guy, man. He, he, he was a special guy. He definitely <laughs> was special. But he also, he also gave me, he's one of the one people that gave me the advice that, you know, no matter who I'm on a song with, no matter what record I'm on, no matter how, like, minor it may seem, like, to always go for the kill. He's like, I don't care who you're on the song with. So I'm like, what he's like I do, whoever you they have to leave saying Remy Ma killed it like I know he I killed me a lot of times like like he's like he killed I me a lot of times you have to so I'm like so even if I want a song with you he's like oh that'll never happen but I in theory yes <laughs> in theory yeah let me, let me tell you what let me tell you what happened when he when you know like I'm looking at the last dance and I'm looking at Pippin and I'm like Jordan's the greatest of all time but he needed Pippen to win them chips, too. So all those records I was doing with Pun, I was pretty much getting abused by Pun on them records, but I was coming in a good second place. Like, <laughs> you know, I wasn't like a whack second. It was like, and then I was like, yo, you know what? I'm kind of nice. They just don't see it because this guy is like incredibly nice. You know, and I'm just like. You got better with time. You're one of those people. That, and I tell people this all the time. If you're nice to begin with, to me, to me, I don't know how I don't know how people get whack. I don't I don't know how rappers like it it puzzles me. It it, it does it, though. People get blows, whack. Yeah, but it blows my mind how that happens. I don't know. But you are proof that somebody absolutely can improve. I think with every rhyme with every album with every project that you've done you have hands down most improved ever <laughs> ever no no yeah. seriously I, I i mean that and i'm saying it as a compliment because most most artists as time goes by they decline especially someone who's been in the game as long as you i think being around the puns and everybody in the whole squad because everybody can rap me Cool and Dre, the Callis, this every every piece to the puzzle, you take something from them, and it inspires you to go harder. Like if you see me, you're like, oh nah, I'm not just gonna go in there and let anybody kill me. And 
to be on as many songs as you was on with pun yeah. like yeah. and be able to do it like twins i was waiting for you to ask me my favorite pun song ever is twins that's my favorite song ever wow. that's the yeah. one that broke the rewind button on my on on my record that's, like, that's my favorite song i've ever been on yeah. you know I, 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 that's my favorite where's my goddaughter she's there she's right here i don't Let's even see you think once y'all see her, she, she ain't going to give up the phone? Hi, Mama. Hi, Mama. I love you, Mama. Say hi. Hi, Hey, I love you, Mama. I love you. Hi, <laughs> <Our> Papa. <laughs> She's, I just, I, I'm sitting here just letting her, letting her Mama. take everything out of the cabinet so that I can do this live with her. You can do this live because she wants the phone. Oh, she wants it now. You you already know she's on it now. And where's but, Fat Boost? He's writing in the other room. Fat Boost, I think he's playing live. I think he's on um 2K Live. I think he's on live. Yo, Pat won't, yo, Pat won't stop rapping, man. He's another one that he has a decline. He I can't say most improved, but he's one of those people that I haven't seen a decline Ow. yet. There's no decline. I know the good. secret. I know the secret to Fat Boost. Really? I know I know this yeah, I know the secret. I know I know when he's best. Yeah. I know okay. when he's best. Okay. I tell him he don't listen to me. I tell him. He, you he know don't he's listen to me either. He wanna be the scientific god. He don't want to listen to me. <laughs> like when I tell him, yo, less is more than any of that word, you right, God. You right. and then he just go, he wanna he wanna go crazy. He's 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 a different kind of animal. I tell people that all the time, like he's he's I've been blessed to be around a lot of different people in this industry that I call family. My husband, you, and I'm blessed to literally sit there and watch Pun do what he do. Like I've I've tried numerous times. When when people don't understand, not only was his rap most of the time on the songs that he was on better than all the people that he was on there with anyway. What made him stand out even more so is that he didn't just double his verse. He tripled and sometimes even quadrupled it. And he was able to align it. This was before, you know, people still dealing with eight tracks. This is before we have the, the, the pro tools and how great it is now. He was able to go in there and literally say it exactly the same way on top of each other. Three, That was a times. lot of work. You know what? I, I can't Pum, do it. I can't do when it. When Pum tried. was around, when 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 Pum was around, it was a lot of work. You know. Uh, let me see. Sometimes these niggas be blowing mind these niggas with these comments. You man. just want to flame them, right? I don't know how much they want me to do. Like you know, we Listen. we we big up everybody. Somebody wrote, "Yo, never forget if it wasn't for Diamond D. I big up Diamond D. D I T C every single day of my life for twenty five years." Yeah, these guys just try to say anything on this fucking shit right here. But <laughs> you have to you have pun, to oh, the, the <laughs> thing, yo, what up, nice up. The thing with pun was he would he would he would flow every word with rhyme and he would put like 20 words. Cause I'm thinking about when you're writing on loose leaf paper. Now forget it. Right. But, so on loose leaf paper, he would have like 20 different words and everything would connect. And then it would rhyme into the next line, but the next line will flip, and then it'd be twenty words that that like yo. And he taught me how to rhyme like that. You you know I I went from boss it, check it, watch how I rap <laughs> to like you know this this the Don Carter Jr. the leader, Terror Squad, clean the leader, family crime for you like uh, like that was hard rhyme. And he was teaching me. He was I was in there with him every day. Be like nah, like this, like that, like this. Like that, like this, like that. And um, so when you go from that era where we really had to rap. No, you really you know, had to rap. To so now we just Rick got again. a cute rap. Now, I see Steve now you Rick just got a comment. cute rap. Nah. You can say no, two you words. Still, you still, you, if that's what you want to be, I'm, I, I'm sorry. Like, it's it's in me. I have I have to. Even when, Joe, we have arguments about it. You be like, Ram, you don't got to just just... Just be cool. You don't gotta say like I still have to squeeze something in there, but it's in my DNA. I don't know how yeah. to not do it. But um, 
that's why you're still here. I think that's why I'm still here. That's why a, a lot of the people that that really cherish and take it serious and, and, and realize what it takes, they're going to be the ones that 20 years later still being talked about. 25 years later, people say like, yo, what's your favorite record? And and I think that that counts for something. I don't, I don't see 20 years from now us discussing or anyone in the industry discussing a lot of the things that, that we've been dealing with throughout the years. Just a few. So a few select few is going to make it through. So, so you know, good luck. Few. Yeah. Good Remember luck. Mar, you're the GOAT, baby. You're the GOAT. I mean, I, I do what I can, you know. I, I do what I can. I'm, 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 I'm just here. I'm, I'm here. I love you, my brother. I love Tony, you I love you. I was, I was just saying, I seen Steve Rifkin in the comments. He said, we're his favorite duo. He said, we're his favorite duo? His favorite he better duo. be. You know, Tony, <laughs> get, you know, yo, you know, I get nervous when I put Tone on it. Cause you know, Tone just like to spaz out, start shit. People don't understand. I think it's a, like, you know how they got a Napoleon complex? I think it's a singer complex. That they gotta be. I got. I'll be sure. I, I'll Tony, be sure. I Tony can sing, but let's not get it twisted. If he, if, if 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 ever need be, like he can rap too. Like let's let's be oh, yeah, clear. Oh yeah, got bars. But what I'm saying to you is, I'll be sure. Come up in here, start telling me gangsters. Yo, I should. Where's the security? I, I'm like, yo, I'll be. Let's talk about Secret Garden. You know when Tony <laughs> come in here, I'm trying to talk about nice R and B or whatever. I can see it in his eye. He want to go back. So I'm like, yo, Tone, you know, let's be nice. Let's be, because, you know, Tone's a troublemaker, you know? In his defense, I've never seen him start anything, ever. <laughs> yo, Ram, I love you, okay? I call you I later. love you, too. Good bye -bye. night. Bye-bye. Good night. So there you have it. Uh, this was a big pun. Uh Capital Punishment, 22-year uh, anniversary. Shout out to our sponsor, uh, Fan Mio. Um, hold on, let me try to give somebody uh, some type of play on here that might have something to say about what's going on. Yeah, so, you know, Pun is our brother, man, and... Uh, we're never going to forget his memory. As long as I'm alive, you will always hear about Big Pun. We will always celebrate Big Pun. He's, he, he's, he's our, you know what I mean? Rough Riders got DMX. Uh, Rockefeller got Jay-Z. You know, the Fuji's got Lauryn Hill. He was our... You know, Pun was the franchise player. Um, and what I can tell you is we always going to uplift this memory. We always going to show love. We always going to rep my brother, Big Pun. Shout out to Steve Rifkin. Waleek, what's up? Shout out to Steve Rifkin for giving us an opportunity at Loud Records when he signed Big Pun. Uh, tomorrow night, I'll see you tomorrow night. Um... I think we got a big, 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 big guest. Um, I heard it's Mark Wahlberg. I'm not sure, but uh, I think it's going to be a big, big show tomorrow night. And, of course, we got the people. Um, put God first. Shout out to everybody on the front line, everybody who's taking care of the country, keeping us safe. Anybody who's lost anybody, you know, rap from uh, Fort Greene passed away. Shout out to Eric B., the whole Paid and Fool posse. Um, of course, Fred the Garza, we ain't going to stop repping my little brother, Eva. Shout out to his wife and his family and anybody affected by the corona. Remember I told you, put God first. God got us. Fat Joe Show. You know what it is. R.I.P. Big Punt.